Look at somebody and say, I am unstoppable. Whatever you thought you lost, whatever is taken from you, God will compensate you. All things work together for good to those who are called according to his what? Purpose. All things. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. Turn your Bible with me tonight. Dealing with negative laws that have kept you where you are. That's what I'm speaking on tonight. Negative laws. That has kept you, denied you some things that belong to you. I want to read a few scriptures. Until you rebel against the forces against you, they will not give up. Therefore, rebellion is allowed tonight. And the rebellion is not against God. It's against satanic powers. Nothing happens until you make it happen. There is no enemy that has captured anyone that he considered as an enemy that will let that one go except there is a fight. If you set a trap and it happened to be that an animal stepped into the trap, the trap catches the animal. The animal struggles to get out of the trap. And sometimes they succeed. They, if the trap is carryable, they will carry it. And sometimes they escape with one leg. In Isaiah 49, I'm reading Isaiah 49, verse 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee. And I will save thy children. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood. As with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I the Lord am thy savior. Thy redeemer. The mighty one of Jacob. The lawful captive. What makes a man a lawful captive? The captivity of the man is sponsored by law. That's what makes a man a lawful captive. The captivity of that person is sponsored by a law. And until the law is broken, the person remains a lawful captive. Or remain in captivity. Breaking the law. That has kept you. Negative laws. That has kept you. Where you are. Laws. Are meant. To control. To limit. To regulate. That is what laws are meant for. Wherever there is a law, it limits, it tells you this is how far you can go. That's what the law says. The traffic law says when it is red, stop. When it is yellow, just get ready. When it is green, move. 
It's a law. Every law and art restricting you or controlling or regulating you so that you can't go beyond the law. There are several spiritual laws that has limited people. I have found out that every miracle breaks a law to take place. Every miracle. If you look at the miracle that the iron head began to swim, whatever goes up supposed to go down, but this one remained on top. Broke the law of gravity. Laws. God created man in his image and likeness. Turn your Bible with me tonight as I pay attention to Numbers chapter 27. law, any law that keeps a child of God in captivity is an illegal law. Somebody say illegal laws. He created us and he said be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. If there be any law that keeps you unfruitful, that law is illegal. One of the things I want you to understand tonight is God's law and the enemy's law. If it is the enemy that made the law, then you can break the law. I didn't hear you. Every hidden destiny helper be made visible in the name of Jesus. I've come to announce to somebody that the season of celebration has just started. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. This week, this week is your week of testimony. Unlimited testimony. Somebody shout and receive it. Find out who made the law that is keeping you in one place. Who established that law? Is it man? Is it God? Is it Satan? The moment you know who made the law, you know where you are standing. If you discover that it's man-made law, you can break it. You discover it's demonic or satanic bad laws, you can break it. The only law you cannot break is the law that God has made. And I tell you that every law of God is pure. Every law of God is good. Can I hear somebody say a loud amen? Yeah. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. Just letting us know the genealogy where these daughters came from. If they came from Joseph, then they came from David. Uh, so they came from Jacob. If they came from Jacob, then they came from Isaac. If they came from Isaac, then they came from Abraham. And these are the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah, and Hogla, and Milka, and Tiza. And they stood before Moses and before Eliezer, the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, our father died in the wilderness. We recognize that. And he was not 
in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah. We know that. But died in his own sin and had no sons. This is where I'm coming to. Why? Can I hear somebody say why? Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he had no son. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zolophiad did not fear the anointing and my calling, my prophetic unction. The daughters of Zolophiad, Moses took the complaint to God, and God needed to reply. And God said, The daughters of Zolophiad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their fathers to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then he shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughters. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall institute a new law here tonight. Oh, I didn't get your aim and I wish I have some people here. And if ye have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. If ye have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family. And he shall possess it and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of, ju a, a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. Can I hear somebody say break the law? Ladies and gentlemen, this is an interesting story written in the book explaining to us until you are dissatisfied with your present situation, you will not take risk to confront it. I've been ministering in the area of spiritual warfare and deliverance. This is the 41 years. And child of God, listen to me. I have found that whatever you tolerate, you can't change it. Whatever you have accepted and everybody around you said that is what has been in existence. And you accept it. You can't change it. You can only change it. If you look at it and said no. Even though everybody believes. And I have, everybody has accepted it. I refuse. Somebody say I refuse. In Israel. As at this point in time. If a man dies. And has no son. Like it is in many cultures in Nigeria. If a man dies and has no son, when they begin to divide inheritance in many places, they said daughters have already married. Are you listening to me? And it has been accepted. Some of us have accepted what we were meant to believe, even a lie, to be the truth. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth, the truth that you know, that is the truth that will bring you freedom. This man died, had five daughters, no son. 
and the inheritance had passed on that we are living without anything. Imagine your father being a billionaire and he passes on and everything is divided because you are married. Does that remove you from being your daughter's, your father's daughter? Of course, no. Does a daughter being a woman make you less woman being? They were hovering around. Everybody around them, they have seen people, they have seen other families. Their father died, only daughters. They have no inheritance. In Israel, that was unwritten law. A law that nobody seemed to know the source. Nobody knew where it came from. It didn't come from God. Even Moses the prophet did not know. One day, these five girls gathered together. They went to the tabernacle. They didn't confront any usher. They didn't confront any protocol. They said, we want to see executive president of Israel, President Moses. What is the matter? They said, we want to see him. I want you to get angry tonight to behave like these girls. No power is strong enough to keep you where you are. I'm sure those girls had consulted with other girls like them and they told them there is nothing you can do. This is the law. They were asking the question, who made the law. Nobody has an answer. Who made the law? Nobody has an answer. They said then we confront Moses. They came to Moses. They said, sir, our father didn't join the company of Korah to rebel against you. To rebel against the Lord. We know our father died in sin. But why? Can I hear somebody say Why? Why should my inheritance, our inheritance be denied us because our father had no son? Somebody say, God forbid. God forbid. Why? Ah. Moses looked at girls, not men, not elders, not priests, not Levites. They says, the, see, the, the Bible began to give you the history. They knew where they are coming from. They are coming from the lineage of Abraham. So if you are going to say anything, see where we are coming from. Our grand, great, great grandfather is Joseph. Then great, great, great is, is Jacob. Then Isaac. Then Abraham. So if anybody must inherit, we too. Must you say, wait. You did not respect the anointing. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, when the load is too heavy on you, nobody will tell you to throw it away. The reason why you are still carrying the load is because you just feel that I can still manage. Don't manage. Because if you manage, you may be damaged. The, the Moses was Moses went straight to God. These little children did not respect the law. They are demanding for inheritance. Can I hear somebody say, I demand my inheritance tonight? As long as Mr. Satan know that if I do this to you, you will eventually accommodate it. He will keep on doing it. Until the day you refuse to accommodate it. That was why Herod 
after killing James, went forth, stretched forth his hand and arrested Peter because nobody rebelled. They kill your father, you are smiling. And kill your elder brother. And they say, every first son in the family, none will survive after 50 years. And you are smiling. God, look at all I have gone through. Look at little girls are questioning my prophetic apostolic oil. Don't say Moses, come on. All the laws I gave you, did I give you this one? Moses, did I give you this law? Moses said no. He said so. Who? made the law. Hear my voice tonight. Whatever law made by anybody, made by any man, made by any spirit that is keeping you in one place, if you shout amen, that law breaks tonight. If it is not made by God, it has to break. Somebody say break. Why would you be denied your inheritance because of your father's history? Why should you be denied your portion because of the story of the family you came into? Did you beg to come into the family? You did not. You didn't dictate the family you came in. You arrived there. Only to discover that the history makes everybody poor and you accept it. No, it is time to change it. That is what supernatural encounter is all about. It's for you to change the law. God said, I did not. The girls were asking questions. Why should we die because of what our father did? 